Alright guys, back for another one. Uh, chance to get out in the woods again. Uh, the little guy's at school, so got a couple, three hours to come out here and mess around. So I figured I'd give you guys one of them do-outs. Uh, obviously by the title, this is going to be one that I had missed in the Land Nav series. I had a lot of questions about it, and rightfully so, because I never actually taught you guys about it. Uh, it's going to be pretty quick. Uh, pretty simple uh, if it runs a little long it's because I'm trying to be thorough and answer all the questions that I've had about this so I uh, give me a second readjust the camera get out my map case and uh, things I need all right guys so uh, took me a minute there it's probably gonna be the trickiest part of this whole video here I uh, left my tripod in Afghanistan so what I'm using now I have one of them gorilla pods and it's hanging from a tree right above me. So as long as I can get that thing to stay straight like that, we should be all right. And the shadow is probably going to be a little tricky, but we'll figure it out. All right, so we got the map. <clears throat> I have uh, set up here. This is the coordinate scale and protractor. It's from, uh, well, you can get them from maptools.com. It says right here on the bottom, but, you know. If you want to do the right thing, in my opinion, uh, you can get these at uh, Survival Resources from John McCann, a good friend of mine. You know, show him some love, give him some support. Uh, pretty cheap. I forget they're like seven or eight bucks or something. Not a big deal. So, all right, talking about after we plot our points on the map, how do we get our azimuth from that? So, as you can see, I explained in past videos, there's different ways to do that. So in this particular case, I'll show you one way. I got my protractor here, and all I did was take one end of strand of paracord, tie a knot in one end, and there's a little hole in the center of the protractor. So now, once you place that on your map, you can rotate this between your two points, and then along the outside edge, gives you your degrees. So, <coughs> uh, the weekend wasn't here yet. Uh, it's coming up this weekend, but after digging around in some of my stuff, I actually found this in my map case in my pack. So uh, this is one of the maps from the northeast site, and uh, if you can see this or not, right here you got your declination diagram, and uh, for the Taunton Mass area, we have a 13 degree difference between magnetic north and grid north. And again, grid north always be in the top of your map. So, grab a pencil here. And we'll just plot two points on here real quick. On the map, I might have to zoom in for you guys. This is pretty tricky. <laughs> So, we'll say, from the intersection right here, oh, we got a couple roads there, so we'll use that as our starting point. We'll just say we parked our vehicle there or what have you. And we're going to venture off through the woods to get to this pond over here. So, we'll take, plot a point. We'll go right to the tip of the pond here. That'll be our second point. Now we can use our protractor and get the distance for our pace count, if that's what we wanted to do. <clears throat> but all we need to do is get an azimuth now and that's what this video is about and what I left out on you guys I uh, hope hope you guys are gonna be able to see this I'm not sure with the Sun and the shadow from me but so very important what you want to make sure I think I covered this on another video you have these a north and south line in the center of your protractor and the east and west you want to make sure they line up with your grid lines as perfect as you can get them 
Oh, that can throw you off. So, I'll put my center point right on that intersection. And I'm going to make sure I got my grid line running right next to my center line here. I'm going to make sure those are as perpendicular as I can get them, or parallel. That looks about good right there. Now all I got to do is take the end of my string and run it out straight to the end of the point, which is right there on the pond. And I actually have exactly 90 degrees there. So that gets you the azimuth between your two points. And I mean, these points could be anywhere on the map, wherever you had plotted them. And we've done videos on plotting grid coordinates. So we got our two marks. Again, put our center point on our start point. Make sure our lines are parallel to each other, either vertically or horizontally here. And then you just run your string out to your other point and wherever it crosses that degree mark is where you want to be. So now converting that to uh, magnetic because we're using grid north right now. Slide this back over in the frame for you. All right, so on this particular map, again, we're at 13 degrees difference, grid to magnetic. So if I'm at 90 degrees and I'm going from grid to magnetic, and again, this is, this is all dependent too on what map you have. If you can see here on this one, see if I can do this for you from up here. All right, so we have our grid in the middle, grid north, and our magnetic north is to the left of that, and it's 13 degrees. So I've also done this in a past video for you guys, made you like a little, little cheat sheet, if you will, but my other protractor has it right on it, which is pretty convenient. So we can see in the center here, I have my grid north right in the center, and if you use the magnetic, the one that goes off to the left, if you go from grid to magnetic on this side, you're going to add. So you take your 90 degrees, add the 13 to it, 103 degrees. So now all you do, take your compass, break that thing out, and you're going to set that on 103 degree azimuth, which is, and this is the uh, Silver Ranger, which is not the one I'm used to using, but it's, uh, it's the same difference, it's actually backwards. It's almost like uh, doing dead reckoning every time you do it. So on this particular one, we have a point at the top, and when you turn your bezel ring, it goes to the degrees. So that would be your level line on the Silver Ranger. So whatever way I turn my body, that level line's obviously pointing dead away from me. Now all I have to do is line up my north seeking arrow with the red doghouse underneath. And once they're bubble over bubble or arrow over arrow, now you look at the degree reading at your level line and that's your degrees. So I would obviously have to turn until I got to 103 degrees, put my arrow over arrow, and there you'd have it. And you always want to follow your level line. So it's, it's pretty simple. I think it's cut and dry. I mean, you get your two points on the map. <clears throat> uh, that's one particular method you could actually put your two points on the map here and then actually draw with a pencil right on your map point to point then put your protractor there wherever the line comes out obviously that's your your azimuth uh, use the string method you could also just take a piece of paper if I can get this in the frame for you guys.
not quite. All right, you can use a piece of paper, so you line up your center point on your stop point. If this was my other point out here at the end, or even up here more, I just run that piece of paper right through both points, and wherever it crosses that degree reading, that's your azimuth. And again, depending on what map you have, crooked there. This uh, declination diagram could be different. Again, you can see this one. You got grid north in the middle. Magnetic goes off to the left. So if you use the little cheat card or whatever it is that I made for you guys on the other video. Or, again, I picked up <coughs> this particular protractor at uh, Staples, I, I believe it was. And it has that little cheat right on right on it for you there in red so in this case again I'm going grid to magnetic so from my map to my compass and it's going left on this map in particular so I would add now vice versa if I was shot in azimuth I knew where I was use terrain association hey I want to get from this hill to that hill shoot my azimuth plot my point where I know I'm at on the map go from magnetic now to grid I would subtract that 13 degrees draw my azimuth out on my map <coughs> and connect the dots exactly the same difference only backwards so hopefully uh, that cleared up any of the questions you guys had again I think it, you know it's pretty pretty simple it's the trickiest part of navigating if you're not familiar with it it's something you definitely need to practice because uh, it's a perishable skill and uh, you know worrying about if you should add or subtract the, the GN angle or anything like that that's where people get tripped up but uh, you know if you just jot down that little cheat for yourself uh, you'll never go wrong you just got to remember to do it so uh, let me wrap this up and I will be back one sec Alright guys, so there you have it. Uh, hopefully that was easy enough to understand for you. Uh, hopefully it cleared up a lot of questions that I had. And uh, as always, you know, if you have any further questions from that, you know, leave comments under the video. And I always try to answer those as best I could. So uh, it's been Derek with Saja Survival. Thank you guys. Sorry I left that video out on you. But, uh, you know, you guys leaving the comments is what keeps me going. So... Thanks again. We'll see you on the next one.